Rock has stepped out of his building and is now walking down a busy upscale street in Center City, Philadelphia. He comes across Christmas carolers on the corner who are cheerfully singing. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. They extend a red bucket in his direction so he can give a donation. He makes a face of disgust, pushes it out of his way. He continues his walk, and as a homeless man extends a cup towards him for a little charity, he knocks the cup out of his hand and keeps walking. Then he bumps into a woman who's out shopping with three preteen girls who all have packages and gifts in their hands. When he bumps into the woman, she drops her packages. Watch where you're going. All this craziness going on. People should be making money, not spending it and giving it away. Y'all are a bunch of poor, pathetic, lost souls. The girls began to sass him as their mother is picking up the packages. You gotta keep it moving. Rock makes a face and the mother jumps at him. He jumps flags them all and then quickly walks away. A few minutes later, Thomas is taking the same path that his uncle took, only his reaction to everyone is quite different. He smiles and compliments the carolers and gives them money. He purchases a cup of hot chocolate from a nearby food truck and gives it to the homeless man, along with dropping some money into his cup. He then enters the office building Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Hmm. What's so merry about it? People out here spending their last dime on gifts, trying to buy the affection of others. Half the people they spend the money on don't even care about them. It's pathetic. What is that? What? Well... Since you made me cancel the carolers, I had G put together a Christmas playlist and that along with the goodies that was sent over by the building manager. I mean, it just has the Christmas spirit just flowing. I mean, isn't it great? <clears throat> great. <laughs> bah humbug. Uh, it's not great. Turn that music off and everybody better get back to work. This is a place of business. I don't pay you to eat and play. I pay you to work. As Rock's back is turned, Thomas tries to sneak past him with a small wrapped gift in his hand, but Rock sees it. I know you didn't just get here. Actually, I did. <laughs> okay. Well, you 15 minutes late, which means I'll be docking your pay by 15 minutes. Um, Mr. Scrooge, Thomas is a salary employee, so you can't dock his pay by 15 minutes. Excuse me, Beth. I am speaking. <sighs> Beth walks away in disbelief, mumbling how he needs to stop pulling the Kamala on her. You know what, Uncle Rock? You can do whatever you want. I have a family and a very sick daughter, as you well know. I plan to spend as much time with them as possible. I mean, life is too short. And you know what? Money ain't everything. What did you just say? <laughs> I know you ain't related to me talking about money isn't everything. Money is everything. What else is there? Money is tangible power and respect. Without it, you can't do nothing. Well, not me. Oh, by the way, Merry Christmas. Thomas tosses the gift he was holding to his uncle and walks off. Rocket's furious. He goes into his office and throws the gift into the trash without even opening it. Sharp pain, I felt the rise in my blood pressure. Kind of hard for me to remember I'm just a vessel.
I guess those brokers and joke employees of mine decided to go home. Rock packs up his briefcase and is about to leave the office when he reaches down into the wastebasket and takes the gift that Thomas left with him. Hello. Merry Christmas, up. You know, outside of my wife and kids, you're really all the family I have, and I, I really don't like the thought of you spending Christmas alone. So, uh, you know, Minnie and I, we wanted to invite you over for dinner tomorrow. <laughs> Thomas, don't you have enough mouths to feed? <laughs> Uncle Rock, you always bidding. You're always making jokes, man. I won't make you any promises, man. Okay, uh, good enough. We hope to see you tomorrow. Good night, Uncle Rock. Rock is still asleep and wraps himself more tightly in the throat. Suddenly, there's a stranger standing next to him who snatches him up out of his chair. Rox begins to swing at him, trying to fight them off, but it's no use. The stranger has superhuman strength. They push Rock out of his apartment door and they find themselves in his past. As a teenager with a sparring partner, they are in his basement training. One, two. One, two. One, two. Woo! I can't wait until my pop gets home. He's going to love this combo and the speed. Whew, untouchable. Yo, what is this? And, and, and who are you? Wait, wait, wait. That's me. <laughs> Yo, those hands can't nobody mess with those hands. And that's my man. He was the best Spartan partner I ever had. I can't wait until the old man gets home. I got a thing or two to show him. Young Rock continues to throw flurries of punches. He's very fast and very good. He ends with a right hook when he hears his mother. Rock, Rock, come quick. It's your father. We gotta go. It's Pop. What's wrong with Pop? Rock's voice is trembling and he says a quick prayer while he and his partner are running. Lord, please let my pop be okay. He was a decent, hardworking man. He loved us. He was good to us. God decided to take him home that year at Christmas time. I won the gloves that year, but it just wasn't the same without my pop. I lost my love for the fight game. You lost your love for a lot of things that year when your father died. You stopped playing keyboards for the church. You let his death break you. Yeah, 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 whatever. We done yet? Not yet. There's something else I need to show you. Hey, Rock. I know it's hard, but she would have wanted you to enjoy this day. You worked hard for this, and you deserve to celebrate your accomplishment. Celebrate? <laughs> Are you serious, Mom? Pop's not here anymore, and neither is Tamara. Thomas doesn't have a mother anymore. You don't have a daughter, and I don't have a sister. And you're standing here talking about celebrating? Listen here, I don't need you to remind me of my loss. Well, somebody needs to remind you. It's like almost half of our family is gone. Oh, really? Well, let me tell you something. It's not what you've lost that you should be dwelling on. It's what we still have that's important. God is still on the throne. God? God? Really, Mom? 
God took your husband and your daughter, left you a widow. My nephew's an orphan. And you're over here talking about him sitting on a throne? Well, maybe he needs to get up. No, no, no. You're not going to disrespect the Almighty in my face, in my house. You better try Jesus, because you know I throw hands. Young adult rock ducks and covers his head, pleading for her not to hit him. Once she backs up, he stands up straight and fixes his suit. You're, you're, you're right, Mom. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disrespect you. And it will never happen again. But I ain't got no respect for that God you serve. So I'll be moving out. I've been offered an internship at Broad Street Records. And it comes with a studio apartment in, the, in Center City. So I'm leaving tonight. Young adult Rock walks off quickly with his mother hurrying behind. Son, son, don't be like that. It's only the three of us. Ma, Ma, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Should have never left. She died a few years later. If I only knew we didn't have much time left, I would have stayed. You know, that's the problem. Nobody knows the future. That's why you gotta hold on and cherish the people that you love and those who love you. Yo, 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 I don't have time for this. If you're trying to say something, just say it. Thomas lost the same people you did and he's still here, still wanting to stay connected to you. I know he's still here. I gave him a job when he got out of school, didn't I? You say that like you did him a favor. Thomas has an MBA from the Wharton School of Business. He graduated at the top of his class. He could really write his own ticket, but no, no. Instead, he decided he was gonna work for you well below what he could have made elsewhere. You even had the nerve to take money out of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I paid for his education and I plan to get all mine back. Look, are we done? because this stuff has already happened. That's why it's in the past. I have no more need for any of it. Yeah, 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 we done. But I do have to get you back because I have two more visitors coming for you tonight. What? I got two more visitors? I bet not have any more visitors tonight. You hear me? I don't know what's got her all riled up. Thomas was named after my father, received one of the best educations money could buy thanks to me. Not to mention, he has an executive position at one of the top media firms in the nation. He has a good life. He then sits back in his chair and puts the throw over his head. He is awakened by being pushed out of the chair onto the floor. Get up, you evil, cranky fool. I have somewhere to be in two hours, so I'm not gonna make, waste a lot of time with you. I'm only doing this as a favor for someone. So we need to get this over with quickly. Beth, is that you? Beth, <laughs> you wish I were Beth. Oh no, sweetheart. She's a sweet, a real woman of a God with a good heart. She doesn't think you are as bad as we both know you are. We know that you are as raggedy as an old pair of chucks. You're so trifling and even, even the children know it. I'm here to pull back the curtain and show you exactly what people think of you in this present time. So let's go. She snatches Rock by the arm and pushes him out the door and he stumbles into Thomas's house. What are you doing? Celebrating the birth of Christ? I forbid it. Christmas by humbug. Oh, Uncle Rock, we're just kids. Can't we have some fun on Christmas? You are just kids. What does it have to do with it? The sooner you stop working, the better. Playing on Christmas is for poor people. Now, get back to work. Oh, Uncle Rock, have a heart. If I had a heart, I would be 
a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Girls, what are you doing? Are you mocking your great Uncle Rock? He is a mean old rotten man. And I don't know how he is going to get in heaven. Do you really think God will really let him in as mean as he is, Daddy? Tony, you don't talk like that. We have to pray for him. I mean, I know he can be unkind sometimes, but he has no one to love and care for him except us. I mean, he is our family and we have to pray for him. Pray for him? He needs more than prayer. Besides, I'm all prayed out. Like I said, he needs more than prayer. He needs a heart transplant. Matter of fact, forget that. Because if he needed a heart transplant, he just die because he's too cheap to pay for it. <laughs> Tamara high fives her mother and the rest of the girls physically get into formation with their mother. And Thomas is standing by himself. He's a little nervous and awkward as he attempts to address his wife's behavior, considering her feelings aren't without merit. Minnie, ba baby, don't be like that. We have to set an, an example for the girls. Uh, an example? What about him setting an example for us? He's the patriarch in this family. And frankly, it's an embarrassment. He has no sympathy for us or our situation. He takes half your money to pay him back for your education, knowing he doesn't need it, and we do. Our daughter needs to continue a life-saving treatment, and he has yet to sign off on the paperwork necessary for her to continue that treatment at the company he owns. I know you are a Christian man, and that's why I love you and married you. But this is a bit much. And frankly, I ain't that saved yet. I get it, Minnie. We are all a work in progress. I mean, I almost lost my cool the other day, just how he was acting up concerning Tina. But I'm reminded that the Bible tells us to pray for those who spitefully use us. Uncle Rock has been through a lot and he's suffered a lot of loss. And he really needs us to pray for him as his family. Okay. We'll pray for him. Daddy, you're right. We should pray for Uncle Rock. Let's pray for him right now. You know, it really is a sad state of affairs when your own family doesn't really like you. Well, Tina likes me. She led the prayer. Yeah, that's right. She did. And isn't that something? I mean, the little girl, your great niece, who you don't care what happens to her, is praying for you. You need to be grateful for Thomas and his family because nobody else really likes you. What you talking about? People like me. People love me. I'm right. Oh, yeah. Okay. People like you. How many Christmas cards did you receive this year? How many birthday acknowledgements did you get? I know the answer to that just as well as you do. No cards, no gifts, no invites, no acknowledgements at all. You are a mean, arrogant, rude, petty individual. And nobody likes you. <laughs> I ain't that bad, Emma. Well, listen, let's judge for yourself. Gee, that's my young bull. Check him out, looking sharp like I taught him. He reminds me of myself when I was a college man. Tell you the truth, that's why I hired him. And I see he's a player after my own heart. I see you, pimple. I see you. <laughs> Shut up and listen. And, and I'm telling y'all, he is the worst. I have never seen somebody with so much money be so cheap. I mean, he is so selfish. 
he would do anything for anybody unless it benefits him in the end. What's he talking about? That's good business. <laughs> what? He can't. Man, I wrote up a Christmas bonus proposal, giving all the employees a hundred dollar bonus for Christmas, and this dude dropped it down to five. Five is what? Five dollars. <laughs> Anybody supposed to buy with that? A four for four? Come on. <laughs> What's it? You have one more visitation tonight, and you had better hope and pray that by the time it's over, it's not too late. <laughs> not too late? Too late for what? Listen here, girl. You don't want to be wasting your time singing solo in the church choir. I can make you a star. <laughs> Purple work, I need you to sign on upstairs. Then the world is yours. She is very giddy and naive. They arrive in front of the building where he lives and someone begins to call him off in the distance. His voice is hostile and he walks right up on Rock and the young lady. Rob, yo Rock, you owe me some bread, homie. You told me my marketing blitz was going to start last week, and I ain't seen nothing. I owe you money? Dog, I don't owe you nothing. I can't help it if people ain't feeling you. What you mean you can't help if people not feeling me? That's your job, dog. Make them feel me. I came to you. You told me it was going to hit me off with a nice campaign, and I gave you my last 50 grand. This was supposed to be my come up out, out, out in them streets. Yo, come up? Are you serious? Dude, how'd you ever think that a 50-year-old man was going to break into the gangster rap music genre? Nobody want to hear you. You not Jay-Z or Busta Rhymes. This was your first album at 50. You a joke. I did you a favor, and now I'm about to do you another one. Hit him. Take this. It's about $20. Go buy you one of them Jamaican platters. Some comfort food will help you sleep good tonight. That's about all you're going to get from me. Rock pushes the money into the man's chest, and the man lets it fall to the ground. Rock chuckles sarcastically and puts the large amount of cash he took the $20 from back in his pocket. Come on, baby. Oh, and another thing. Don't you ever, ever pull up on me again. The man becomes irate and pulls a gun from his waistband. The young lady screams and runs. <laughs> oh, you think it's sweet. Do I like peanut butter cake to you, homie? You gonna pull a strap on me? So what? I'm supposed to be scared? You want to shoot me? Okay. Shoot me. Shoot me. Shoot me. Everybody wants to be hardcore. Everybody wants to be hard. You like it when we're bringing it hardcore. That's why we're bringing it hard. Baby, we, let's pray. We got to pray right now. I have a bad feeling that something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but I keep thinking about Uncle Rock. Something's bad is happening when I feel this. I, I can feel it in my spirit. Really? Your uncle? The same uncle that still has a sign off on the pre-authorization necessary for our daughter to continue, continue her treatment? That uncle, right? Well, the Bible says you reap what you sow. So if something bad is happening to him, then good for him. He probably brought it on himself. Penny, I haven't forgotten that he's standing in the way of our daughter completing her protocol. But us praying for him, it isn't about that. Aren't we supposed to intercede for people like my uncle? Or we just shrug our shoulders and, and turn the other way? I mean, if we can't show mercy and pray for him, 
why should God show mercy and pray for us? We're not sinless. We're not perfect. He's hurting and hurt people actually hurt other hurt people. He and I, we all we got outside of you and the girls. And I can't give up on him like that. I can't. Okay, Thomas, let's pray. And Rock is suddenly surrounded by dark spirits who are now dragging him into utter darkness. He begins to scream and try to pull away, but it's of no use. He's powerless. Suddenly, an army of warrior angels arrive and grab him from the clutches of the dark spirits. They try to fight to hold on to him, but they are no match for the angelic hosts. While some of them are able to beat back the dark spirits, another one removes rock from that space, but he's suddenly standing alone and very distraught. What's happening? Were those angels and demons? And some fool shot me. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, oh, hold up. I know what this is. Huh. You got jokes. You got jokes. <laughs> I know you are behind all of this. So what? What? What you want from me? You want me to serve you? You want me to surrender my life? You want me to bow down and worship you? Why should I? Huh? Tell me why should I? The first time I trusted you with my life, you took my father from me. That man was everything to me. And I wanted to be just like him. I, I, I became a junior deacon trying to follow in his footsteps. Yet you let him die like a dog in the streets. Then I trusted you again. And you let a drunk driver take my sister. Leaving Thomas here all alone. She adored that boy. And it broke my mother's heart. I had to watch her year after year grieve Tamara and my father. And she stayed faithful to you. And for what? You left us with nothing. I'm not serving you. I'm not worshiping you. I will not bow down to you. Who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Who am I? You ask? Ebenezer Scrooge? I am he who knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I am he who has laid the foundations of the earth. I am he who provides food for the raven. I am he who gave Solomon all of his wisdom and riches. I am he who formed man from the dust of the earth and fashioned woman from his rib. Who am I? I am he whose word is like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. Rock is completely broken before the Lord and begins to ask for forgiveness. I am he who knows the plans I have for you, plans of good and not evil. I am he who has numbered the very hairs on your head. I am he who has loved the world so much that I sent my only begotten son into the world that the world through him might be saved and that includes you. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. I've been a fool, God. <laughs> I, I, I need you, Lord. Lord, please forgive me. Ah, it's more.
morning. It's Christmas morning, and I wasn't too late. Thank you, Jesus. It wasn't too late. Merry Christmas. I got I to gotta go. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, let me call Beth. He calls Beth, waking her out of her sleep. Beth. Hello? Mr. Scrooge? <laughs> it's Christmas, and I'm not working today. Listen, I've tried to be patient with you, but I have to draw the line somewhere. You, 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 you're absolutely right. And, and, and I respect that. But I, I really need you to do this for me. Well, it's actually for everyone else. My nephew, my great nieces, you, and everyone at the office. <laughs> Mr. Screws, what are you talking about? I know, I know, I know, I know. Just, just listen. I need you to email the pre-authorization forms from HR for Thomas's insurance. And I need you to cash out all the employees a $500 Christmas bonus. Uh, all right. Now, wait. Gee, stop playing on my phone, boy. Beth, it's me, Ebenezer. Really? Uh, are you okay? <laughs> yes, Beth. I'm okay. Let's just say I had a real come to Jesus moment. <laughs> uh, oh, and, and make sure you double that bonus for yourself. We'll talk after the new year about your raise or promotion because everyone will be off with pay until then. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Beth. And email that paperwork. I, 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 I gotta go. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm, yeah, um, yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Scrooge. I'm... Um, um, right away, sir, and oh, oh and, and and um, Merry Christmas. They hang up, and meanwhile, at the Thomas's house, the girls are opening their gifts, laughing and playing. Thomas and Minnie are drinking coffee and watching them from a distance with heavy hearts. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door. Who could that be this early on Christmas? <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh. Who is it? It's me, your uncle. Uncle Rock? Minnie stands up and rushes to grab the girls and pulls them back out of the way as he enters the house. <laughs> uncle Rock, uh, dinner is until later. Are you all right? Did you sleep in your suit? <laughs> Rock grabs Thomas and gives him a big hug and a kiss, laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> Yes, nephew, I'm great. I really love you, man. And I'm just so grateful that you are my sister's son. You have always been a blessing to my life. And I see that now. Hold up, wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that overnight you just changed just like that? I know, I know, I know. It's, it's hard to understand. <laughs> but the only thing I can say is God is good. And I'm sorry for all the drama I put y'all through. Which is why I signed off on the HR paperwork. So this little mama can complete her protocol. <laughs> Everyone gets excited and begins to celebrate. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Rock you. reaches in his pocket and pulls out a wad of cash and gives it to Thomas. Hey, Thomas, I, 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 this is not much, but first thing Monday, what? I'm going to make you and Minnie the administrators of the trust I created for you. <laughs> a trust? A trust for me? <laughs> yes, Thomas. I know I've been making you pay me back for all your education, but, but I've been putting that money into a trust. My sister didn't play. You got and, and I was too, way too scared of her to keep that money for myself. Oh, man. Like Thomas that? and Minnie look at each other and start praising God. Minnie, thank the you, The children get in on it, and so does Uncle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, God. <laughs> well, you know, there's only one thing left to say. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Very well done, everyone. Very well done.